Okay, so I got the board off of the uh, heat sink. The, uh, the heat sinks are just right over there. Just a couple of screws, no big deal. Uh, got one beer down, working on another one here. Do a little better thinking with a little beer, you know what I mean. So, uh, having a look at it, these are the inputs. And uh, if you flip it over, they go in this direction, yar. So, uh, t -t -t pointer, good enough. All right, so these are the connections coming in. Uh, there is the, uh, the ferrite-looking core type thing. I'm guessing it's just to keep, I don't know, stuff backfeeding through and causing lots of problems. Uh, we'll have to sever this here. So these two leads will have to be severed because we do not want to feed this board. Um, this here is the transformer we saw on top. As you can see, that's the transformer. Uh, that would be your ins and outs on the transformer. We don't want that to work. That transformer is bad. Uh, we want to sever this here and this here, and that would essentially cut off this entire board. Because as you can see, this trace does not touch anywhere. All the way across. Till here. Then we run into some problems. And then here, this half of the board is completely separated from this half of the board. I'll show you where they connect on the other side. So, when you flip it back over... Fuck my pointer. There it is. Alright. Uh... So, you can see those connections there. This is your rectifier. So that turns your 120 volts um, into... You know, I'm not sure if this is 240, 120. Throughout the casing. Um, yeah, so you know what? It's a good question. This looks like it's just 120 volt then. Alright, so anyway, 120 volts. Uh, this turns your 120 volts through the rectifier to usually about... Uh, 160, 150 volts DC. It steps up a bit. Um, that goes through all of this stuff over here, and then ends up through this uh, through this diode, uh, through the capacitor, and then through the uh, fast acting switch. So, um, as you can see, the motor in and out does connect through these two resistors. You can go. That's actually a resistor. I just noticed it does say. Um, focus uh, 0.1 ohms so obviously that's a resistor uh, current limiting to uh, make sure this doesn't discharge completely um, good strong resistor there um, when you flip the board over my suspicions were correct uh, that your diode here feeds this one and this is the second feed that feeds the motor as well this here is indeed your gate. This is what makes it work. Um, and that, as you can see, bridges across. So your gate comes through a couple of these little service mount diodes uh, through this IC. And then that comes back over through a couple of more diodes and ICs and random gobbledygook garbage, whatever, who gives a shit to this little guy right here, and that's what controls this, and that's what gives power out here. So we need to isolate all this, and the easiest way to do that is to just cut it off the board. Just simply snip it and uh, uh, da -da -da, right there, bend the wire up and solder on your point. Um, this here will have to be severed. So best way to do that is just to unsolder these two flip them up, cut them off, no big deal. Then on this side here, yeah, so there's nothing you have to do there. That's the one connection for the one resistor, that's the connection for the other resistor, and they just bridge across, and uh, that's it. So basically all we have to do is uh, cut it off there, cut it off there, right across, unnecessary, and that'll separate all of this fuck you board we don't fucking need you yeah fuck that board gone 
all useless. All we need is that top bit. That right there. So, this one takes the uh, ripples out of the... The rectifier doesn't make a perfect DC connection. It still has a little bit of ups and downs. And if you have a oscilloscope, which I don't, you can definitely see them. There's lots more videos on YouTube that explain this much better than I'm explaining it. But this is the nice, simple, easy way of doing it. Um, like I said, I do have another one that is pre-prepared. I don't have it with me. It's not in the garage. It's at my shop. And, uh, my shop's not at my garage. So, uh, that'll be another video. Um, as for this video, I don't think there's really anything we want to go over. Um, this panel's completely useless, which is why I didn't even bother saving the connector, because I don't like the input. Um, it's a big board. Uh, like I said, I think the screen's cracked, so we don't really care about that whatsoever. Um, this is a really really nice you know right here so we are going to use that we're not going to mount it to anything else um we are going to have to take off this pulley um we don't need a, a big flywheel for a lathe there's just no need for it um probably gonna have to reduce it two or three times because i'm pretty sure the lathe uh only runs on 1200 rpm or maybe 2000 rpm and then the gearbox steps it up and steps it down, so we don't need to do that. So if I can't get a pulley small enough, I'll get a, a bigger pulley to a bigger pulley, and then that pulley will go down to a bigger pulley to step it down um, so it gets down to the proper RPM. Um, this is a cool little thing that I will definitely use in another project. Uh, we are making a uh, surface planer, um, so the, the base would have to raise and lower. Um, we're going to use a nice big probably five horsepower motor i got a couple of horsepower uh different motors um there's a i think that's a uh nice big one over there um <clears throat> lots of interesting stuff going on um i released a couple more videos and uh that's where that is so this one here i'm just gonna have to scratch a couple of these leads off pretty easy all you do is just take this and scratch it off take your knife probably better with a knife well okay probably better not using a knife like that jesus christ the hell did i do to this thing whatever anyway uh yeah so scratch those leads off and we'll get to making some pulleys later ciao